Hello, Mad Cappers. Before we start to learn more about making hats, let me tell you a little secret. Well, really, it's a big secret for our company. It's a secret to our success in the winter hat business for the past 25 years. Now it's time to share it with you, especially because you might want to work this into your next hat creation. This little piece of fleece has built our business year after year. We call it an ear flap, but it's really a built-in tuck up or wear down cuff that can come down and cover your ears and the back of your neck and head. I originally designed it to cover hair loss for women going through chemo because I noticed that traditional hats that are brimmed don't generally cover the back of your head or any part of your head below your ear. The added flap would do this, plus offer privacy for running errands without wearing a wig. And because of the cut of the flap, it offers warmth and comfort. Literally a hug for your head. You can sew this cup onto any kind of lining for your hat and you can put it part way up or all the way down at the seam where your hat band meets your hat brim. And the way the cuff fits, you'll never have to worry about your hat blowing off your head during this blustery winter weather. Now we'll get to the fancy hats later in the new year, but today I'm gonna show you how to put the ear flap into the furry pillbox pattern, which is already on the channel. But this time today, we're gonna make it with our cozy ear flap installed. The pattern piece will be available as a download on our website, and there'll be a link in the description below. This is the piece that'll be on the website. It's half of the, um, the ear flap, so you're going to cut it on the fold. And I'm gonna show you what I mean right now. And the fleece that I'm using is called Arctic Fleece. If you're Canadian, you can get that at Fabricland or Fabricville. I find it's a really nice medium weight fleece and it works really well for this flap. You don't want to use a really heavy fleece because that's just going to make your hat harder to fit once it's all said and done because that cuff does add some space inside the hat. So we do need to make our pattern just a little bit bigger when we cut it out. And on our ear flap template, we've added a very, um, a narrow shadow around the template. You can barely see it here, but it's there just in case you need to make it a little bit bigger because your seam width is larger than mine, which is three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. But I know that some people use a half inch seam width or a 12.5 millimeter seam width. So the shadow's there if you need it. And I've cut it on the fold with a stretch going in the way of the long length of my piece because it's going to wrap around our head and I'm just going to now pin it together and I'm going to sew along that long open edge leaving the fold without a seam and I'm using my serger to keep it stretchy but you can use a straight stitch too because there are lots of seams in any of these hats that we're making for winter so just a little bit of stretch you'll still get and I'm going to do all of my pieces for my furry pillbox and we're ready to go. There is a furry pillbox pattern package on our website on the download section and the link will be below and the top is also included in that package. And it's the top that we'll be using on a number of pieces. So if you've already downloaded it, you already have the top and the pieces for the pillbox. I cut a piece of fur that is uh, 24 inches long, which is one and a half inches longer than the circumference of my head or four centimeters longer than the circumference of my head. And that 24 inches works out to 61 centimeters long. So my fur piece is 61 centimeters or 24 inches long, and it's five inches or 13 centimeters deep. My fleece pieces, I cut a piece of fleece that matches my top for the outside of my hat. And it is about 23 and a quarter inch or 59 centimeters long on the stretch, uh, which is about uh, three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters longer than the circumference of my head. 
we add a little bit of length, the fleece will stretch to accommodate the fur. The fur, not so stretchy, so that's why we cut it a little bit longer than our fleece pieces. But we'll work the pieces in all the way around at this next stage as we start putting the pieces together. But first we do all our back seams. And now we are going to sew our ear flap to the piece that we're using as our lining, which I've just chosen to make solid black. And so I found the center point of my ear flap and I'm going to pin it to the back seam of my black lining piece and I'll pin on both sides just up to the where the, the ear flap piece curves. And I'm going to start um, close to the curve on one end and sew very close to the edge of the seam with a quarter inch or six millimeters away from the edge. So just catching the uh, where that surge is that I can see so clearly because I did it in my nice bright burgundy thread so you could see it too. And as I go around the shaped uh, corner of my ear flap, I'm just working it into the lining and that creates some tension for the ear flap, which is the secret sauce, folks, for the hug around your head. It's just a gentle curve and you just work it in as you go around and I'll just turn it over to finish off that seam. And now my ear flap is attached right sides together to my lining. And I'll just mention too that I did do top stitching on all of my fleece pieces in my preparation. So there's top stitching on that back seam of the fleece black lining piece there and top stitching on the outside top piece as well as the top that had the center dart. And as you may already know from watching any of my other winter hat videos that have a top, that we have a dart in our tops that helps to lift the top up so that it takes away the stress when it's joining the seam from the band or the top of the hat. And I'm just tucking my fur out of the way of the seam and I'm trying to clean up that edge where the fur is, is moving in the direction of the seam that I'm going to sew and moving it back in towards the piece and trying to clean up that edge so that my two knit backings from each side of my furry band are going to meet without a lot of fur in between and that the fur is going to be pushed inside so that it's not stuck in my seam. And again, in that furry pillbox video, I go into this method of cleaning up a fur piece before you start attaching it to something else. So I can't recommend watching that again enough because it'll just refresh your memory about working with faux fur. They're all a little bit different, but this step really helps save some time and makes a much nicer hat when all is said and done because you're moving all of those strands of fur inside to the rest of the band so that it pops out nicely and is not stuck in your seams and if you do it right hopefully you won't notice that back seam i'm just going along and i'm just seeing what stuck into the seam and pulling it out fluffing it up and it looks beautiful and now i'm going to go around the hat and i'm going to do the same thing to the other two raw edges just pushing that fur inside and sewing it down so that my knit backing that holds the fur together ha has a nice clean edge that I can see when I start joining it to some other fibers. And in this case, it's going to be polar fleece. Now, I just briefly mentioned that the ear flap will take up a little bit of real estate inside your hat and certainly inside your hat seam, but when it's a stretchy hat, you really don't have to add a whole lot to the um, length or width, I suppose, of the pieces that are going around your head. So I, I normally add about a half an inch or 12 and a half millimeters to that um, the width of those pieces that are going around your head. I didn't in this case, though, because for me, this, this one's going to be for me. I made another one for a customer 
And I find that I always wear my hat with the flap down in the winter. So I'm not too concerned about making it big enough to wear the flap inside. But it's a consideration to think about when you're doing your pattern drafting. And now I'm just uh, going around the fur and I'm pinning the uh, lining that has the ear flap to one edge of my furry band. The right sides are together and you will notice that the flap is actually sort of sandwiched in between the lining piece, the black lining piece and that beautiful raspberry fur. And even though I did prepare my fur piece by trying to sew back those wild ends of fur away from the edge of the seam, you, they're still wanting to pop out in a direction I don't want them to pop out in. So while I'm pinning, I'll try to push them back, but this is going to slow down my sewing because I'll be constantly pushing that fur back in to where it's not stuck in my seam. And I'm using my uh, average seam width of three eighths of an inch or one centimeter as I go along. And I'm slowly pushing that fur away from where I'm going to sew and I'm gently working in those pieces so that they're all going to fit well, which they do. And if you have a problem, if one piece is quite a bit larger than another, then this is a good time to stop and, and take a look and see if you can correct that problem. You will have to slowly um, work the pieces in and maybe um, give the fleece part a little bit of a stretch, but they should fit together pretty nicely as you work your way around. And it's very helpful too when you pin or clip in at least four spots, the front and the back, and maybe on the sides before you even start sewing. And I'm just gonna turn it over and take a look. And that's what it should look like. And now we will sew the piece of fleece that we have made for our outside top. And again, just pin at the back seams where the two seams meet and where we've cut a notch in the fleece for the center front and our line on the back of our knit backing for the fur. And then just slowly going around and tucking that fur back in and working that fleece piece so that it fits perfectly alongside the edge of the fur. Really folks, you are gonna love this hat with the ear flap. And you know what? It's gonna, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have to make lots of these for family and friends too. But seriously, if you add it to your sewing business, Hopefully you will be as successful with this small little addition as we have been. And I'm really happy to share it with you because as some of you know, I am going to be retiring soon from production sewing. So it'll be nice if some other people step up to the plate and make sure that all those people out there with cold ears have this kind of hat. And so now I'm just uh, going around and matching up all my notches and working in the, the inside top of my fleece lining with the outside top of my fleece lining. And it kind of looks like a furry pillbox hat now, doesn't it? And I'm just going around and I'll do a stitch that's fairly close to the edge um, because I'm going to sew the top on next with my three eighths of an inch or one centimeter regular seam width. So this seam that just put those two sections together is about a quarter of an inch or six millimeters away from the edge. And it's looking very nice and cozy and fun. So now I'm going to take my top and I will match the back uh, dart seam with the outside uh, back seam and I'll go around and match the front notches that I've cut. And then I'll work the top in with pins and clips all the way around. And eventually when I feel that I've got that right, and this is another adjustment moment because if you find that your top is too big or too small, then I guess it's time to either trim it if it's too big or cut one that's slightly bigger if it's too small. And it's, uh, it's a little bit of a, of a 
guessing game because our fleeces are not all created equally. Some are stretchier than the ones that I'm using and maybe some aren't as stretchy as the ones that I'm using. And now I'm just gonna push and pull so that that seam joining my top and my, my hat band is fairly flat because the next step is a step that helps to remove the stress from the top and gives us a nice rounded shape. Um, we're gonna do a top stitch literally right up at the top of that uh, band seam right where my finger is and I'm going to go all the way around. I'm just going to follow with the edge of my presser foot just alongside the raw uh, fabric that's sticking up from the seam joining my top and my side. And, and the left side of my presser foot is going to be my fabulous guide. So I'm just going slowly all the way around and just sort of trying to stay about the same distance away, which is the width of the left side of my presser foot. And I'm pulling out that fabric on either side of my seam before I sew alongside, just to make sure there's no folds and that everything is gonna lie flat and that that top stitch is gonna be perfect when we look at it from the right side. And at this point, I'm going to add a serge on that, uh, just to finish up that raw edge on the inside. And you can do the same thing, or you can just trim away that extra fabric inside with a pair of scissors. But because I usually sell my hats, I'm just used to finishing that raw edge that I'm pointing to with a serge. Alrighty, here we go. Look at this lovely hat. You can wear that ear flap cuff down to cover your ears. You can wear it tucked inside the hat. Either way, you have a fancy hat and a very discreet way to cover your ears if you need it. And that, my friends, it started the growth of our winter portion of our hat company. If you're going to make a hat that's a little bit more dressy and has several more seams to sew, then you may need to add a little bit to the length of or the width of the pieces that are going around your head when you add the ear flap band inside your hat. And don't forget to pick up the copy of the ear flap on our website. The link is in the description. You, could you can print out two and tape them together so that you don't have to worry about cutting on the fold. And with the hat with the ear flap tucked up inside. The hat will sit up a little bit higher on your head, but look fabulous. And of course, when the weather is cold, you bring it right down and you do not change the depth of your hat, however, because the cuff does all that work for us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye.